So I did the effect of water pollution on human health. Um, I chose this basically because water impacts our health directly in all sorts of ways. And I know 1 billion people lack access to safe drinking water, so I wanted to focus on that. Water pollution. Pollution is defined as introduction of a substance that has harmful effects into the environment. So the past couple or the past years we've seen an increase in this, so it's become a concern. And it can be caused by garbage, toxins, litter, development, industrial causes, basically any substance that's not organic and supposed to be in our bodies of water somehow getting into our bodies of water. And then the focus of this paper is on human health, so specifically water and borne illnesses. Um, here are two pictures of pollution. As you can see, these are extreme cases, and basically, water and borne illnesses could be contained in these waters because of the extreme pollution and how dirty the waters are if someone were to drink it. Okay, so a background on waterborne illnesses. They're present in many countries, but they cause the most harm to citizens of the third world countries, so undeveloped countries. Um, five common ones that are known are hepatitis A, polio, cholera, dysentery, and typhoid fever. Um, they're all caused basically by fecal matter in the water, and then basically if you drink that, so not having safe drinking water and drinking polluted water that has feces in it. The map above shows the countries at highest risk of... Um, waterborne illnesses. So as you can see, like lots of the countries in Africa are at higher risk. America looks pretty safe. The darker the color, the bigger risk. And then the picture below is possible fecal matter, feces going through that tube into the water. So if someone were to drink that, they'd be at risk for all sorts of uh, waterborne illnesses. Okay, so I'm going to run through the ones I did my presentation on. Hepatitis A is a liver disease, and it's really mild. There's uh, 1.4 million cases a year, and there are 95 cases in 2010 in the U.S. Um, there's no specific treatment for it, and it's one of the more mild waterborne illnesses. Polio. There were outbreaks a long time ago and like, epidemics, but it's decreased 99% since 1988. Um, it affects people under five mostly. There are 414 cases in 2013. Um, there's no evident symptoms at first, but it can lead to paralysis, as seen in that picture, in some serious cases. And as long as one case exists in the world, everyone's at risk of getting it. And since there's no cure, um, it puts a lot of people at risk. Cholera. It's the most deadly waterborne illness. Um, there's 4 million cases a year. Um, it can be fatal within hours if left untreated. That's what makes it so deadly, more deadly than these other four that I did. 75% um, of victims have no symptoms. And um, it's continuing to rise, and basically with places that lack access to safe drinking water, and it's become a concern because it's continued to rise throughout the world. Dysentery is um, caused by the bacteria Shigella, and it, it's dangerous because it can exist for long periods of time outside the body, so just kind of linger around and then attack the body when it's most vulnerable to becoming sick. 140 million people develop it each year, and you get sick from as few as 10 bacteria getting into your uh, system. And symptoms include fever, cramps, and rectal pain. Typhoid fever. Headache, fever, and diarrhea all develop two weeks after you're infected by this disease. It's caused by salmonella, which you've probably heard of. It's a very common thing. So that uh, salmonella typhi is the cause of typhoid fever. 12.5 million people are affected by it each year, which is a lot. Um, 200,000 deaths, making it have about a 12-13% fatality rate. And moderate decrease over the last decade, which is a good sign. So the solution is stop polluting, more sanitary environments, and then a side solution is medication and vaccinations, which help uh, you know people not get it, but it doesn't really address the problem that's causing the issue, um, but it's still a good option. Water filtration systems can um, lead to clean drinking water in third world countries and really help eliminate these people from getting these diseases, saving many lives, and there's a picture, an example of... Um, a water filtration system and basically it's just going to take money 
and people taking action for this to happen, otherwise there won't be a solution. Um, these problems relate to all major pollution problems in human health because it really shows how um, what we drink affects our health and um, if you live in a third world country you're at a higher risk. These are the references I used for my photos and stats. Thank you for watching my presentation and this will conclude it.